Kuala Lumpur as the capital of Malaysia is where you'll find all kinds of iconic Malaysian dishes, including nasi lemak. Now in Kuala Lumpur, there are a number of restaurants that specialize in nasi lemak, where you get to enjoy your nasi lemak or coconut rice with not just your standard sambal and ikan bilis, dried anchovies, but also you get to have it served with a whole different array of curries and accompaniments. Now in this episode of Street Food Journeys Malaysia, I'm going to show you how to make a vegan version of this nasi lemak deluxe. I'm joined by Lisa Yeo who's going to make a vegan pachil or mixed vegetables with peanut sauce and the jet lag warriors get to experience durian ice chendol, a shaved ice and coconut drink topped with Malaysia's king of fruits. Nasi lemak is made up of a number of different components. Uh, it includes the coconut rice, it would have fried anchovies, it would have the sambal to go with it, usually it'll have an egg, and also it would have um, if, uh, some cucumber. And if you want like the deluxe version of nasi lemak, you might find like a curry or a rendang and maybe some fried chicken. So we're going to do all of that vegan style. So what we need are some tofu sheets, binkut sheets, what we call in Malaysia fujok. There are a couple of different types of binkut sheets. These are the pliable ones and that's what I try and get. Okay, so straight out of the packet, they're easy to peel. You don't need to soak them beforehand. So let's get a sheet of this. Once you open the packet, you have to make sure that you secure it really well, okay? It has to be airtight, otherwise it will go crusty and it won't be pliable anymore. So this is the size that we want. We're gonna cut it in half. So the next ingredient we need is a nori sheet. It is what you usually find used for sushi. So I'm just gonna use one of these. Basically, you want four times the amount in surface area of the bean put sheet to the nori sheet. And now we're going to make a, a, a seasoned starch to help put all this together. So for the starch, I'm gonna use some plain flour, some rice flour, some pepper, mushroom seasoning, if you don't have mushroom seasoning, you just use a bit of salt. And I'm going to add some wakame. This is the that grass jelly that you get with sushi, the green stripy grass jelly, if you know what I mean. You can actually buy it in dried form. So I actually bought some dried wakame and then just blitz it in the blender so that it's like a powder. I'm just gonna put a little bit more because it gives it a nice seafood flavor. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to add some boiling water in here. Okay, so this is uh, water straight out of the kettle. Mix this into a paste. So now what we're going to do is brush the sheet with the paste. Okay, so let's get some of this paste just brush it on place this here fold it up and then more Fold it up. Now we're going to cut this into strips. OK, 
Okay, now we're gonna deep fry these. So let's heat up this oil to about 160 degrees Celsius and then we're gonna fry these in a couple of batches till they're crispy. So there you go. You hear how crispy they are? That's what it looks like. Delicious. Give it a go. Alright, Chandel Durian. What is this? Extra, extra large? <laughs> <laughs> so huge. Wow. <laughs> what do we notice? Sugar on the bottom. This is coconut milk. Mm -hmm. This is the green noodles called, I forget. The green Chandel. I think that's called Chandel. Oh, that's Chandel. Yeah. Okay. We got big pieces of durian and then some sweet corn from a can. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know what's not to it. like about this stuff. It's going to be so good. I can already imagine. Oh. First try, Chandel Durian. Dun, 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 dun. Probably one of the most highly recommended. Um, mm -hmm. Probably Chendal Durian and Temple Yaki, which yeah. we still have not found, but we will get there eventually. That's true. Temple Yaki? Temple Yaki. Temple Yak. Yeah. Close. <laughs> Alright, Chendal Durian time. I don't even know how to eat this. Uh, you got so a spoon hard. and you got a straw. So, yeah, that's true. I think you gotta mix first, no? Oh, come on, mix it like you mean it, Ivana. I'm scared that Mix I it like you it. stole it. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, here's a good technique. Here's a good technique. Wow. <laughs> Do you supposed to smash up the durian so it comes in the straw? The straw is really big. Maybe supposed to get chunks in the straw. Hmm. How is it? Oh, it's really good, Ivana. Is it? Oh, it tastes like durian, <laughs> and it's ice cold. <laughs> it's actually really good. We had durian you once can... before. Sorry, we had chendol once before. This is better than other chendol. Durian chendol is better than regular chendol. Oh yeah, we had chendol on its own and we had durian on its own. Mm. So I tell you what, this is better than chendol, but this is not better than durian. And it's really cold. Oh, I got a, I got a brain freeze. <laughs> oh. I got frozen head. I can't oh stop doing it though. Leave some from, for me, eh? Mm. I got frozen head, but I'm addicted to durian. Oh, it's good. What does this cost, Ivana? That costs 15 ringgit. 15 ringgit, not cheap, yeah. but durian's not cheap. It's probably a fair price. But it's mm. like big chunks of durian too. Mm. Big piece of durian, corn, green noodles, ice cold, durian flavor. It smells like durian. Mm. This is five stars, not gonna lie, this is yeah. five stars. Nice. Okay, let me have some. Okay. Maybe we should buy one more for you. Really? So right now I'm going to make the uh, the coconut rice, a quick and easy way to do it. Got the rice cooker, some jasmine rice, some water, a bit of salt. If you have pandan leaves, you might want to tie, uh, bruise a couple of pandan leaves, tie them into a knot and add them. Just tuck them in the rice. I'm just going to use pandan powder. Stir it a little bit. You're wondering where the coconut milk factors into this? I'll show you afterwards, okay? So let's cook this per normal rice. So what we're going to do now, we're going to make the sambal, the chili onion condiment uh, that's typically served with nasi lemak. So I've got a couple of onions here. I've got more onions here than I need for the sambal, but we're going to do this now and save some of, some of it for some of our other recipes. Okay, so we're going to just cut this into chunks. And the rest of this, I'm just gonna slice it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna blitz this. My garlic and lemongrass is already 
minced, so I'm only doing onion and a bit of ginger here. Okay, so that's my onion that's been blended. We're going to use some of this for the sambal and the rest of it for some of our other, uh, some of the other dishes that go with nasi lemak. Now, I usually would use chili paste with this, so I'm going to shortcut it and use some chili powder. So I've got this here. I'm going to add some of the onion. This onion has a lot of juice in it. So we're going to take advantage of that and mix this into a paste. Put this up. Add some oil. This is a little bit optional. I'm going to put some minced lemongrass in here and some minced garlic. So you want to fry this. Give the onions soft and the oil separate. This usually has shrimp paste in it or blachan. I'm going to replace the shrimp paste with some fermented ground bean paste, okay? Some water. Got tamarind extract. Mushroom seasoning or mushroom powder. Sugar. Vegan. That's the vegan sambal. The version I did at my restaurant was actually thicker. It was like um, kind of like a jam consistency, but here I've just made it a little bit more watery. Okay, so now we've made the sambal and the rice is ready. This is the rice with the salt and the pandan flavoring. Okay, so I'm gonna add some coconut milk powder to this. So I cook it as though I were cooking normal rice and then I stir in the coconut milk powder afterwards, okay? So that's your nasi lemak rice, ready? Hi, I'm Lisa Yeo. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make percha and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. It is very, very simple. Very easy and most important of all, it is super, super, super delicious. Mm, you will love it. These are the vegetables for the percher you get uh, here. This is cabbage, boiled. This is tauge, which is also boiled. This is a uh, French bean, or you can use long beans in Malaysia. Uh, carrots here. And then tofu and tempeh that I just fry. I cut them into cubes and I fry them in oil. But typically, we always have kangkong, but I'm so sorry, I could not find kangkong here, so I had to make do with all the ingredients that I have. Here are the ingredients to make the perchel. 15 pieces of dried chili that has been washed and cleaned and dried, 7 cloves of garlic, 4 bird eye chili, if you like it spicier, you can add more to it, and 2 medium onion. Next, we will need two cups of uh, ground peanuts uh, that has been fried. Um, you can choose to remove the skin. I do not remove the skin because I like the color that the skin gives uh, in the gravy. So this would later, uh, I've cooled this down now. So I would need to then blend this, uh, process this until it's a little bit coarse. I've already processed a little bit the peanuts. It should be like this, yeah? So let's start. Yeah, just cut up all the onion a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All the ingredient here will be fried in oil. So once the oil is hot enough, we're going to fry all the ingredients. I'm going to fry it until it's um, nicely brown. Uh, normally, we would use chikko. I do not know why it's called in English, chikko, but I don't, I cannot find chikko as well here, so I skip the chikko. Um, also, I do know that uh, some people would use some belachan or shrimp paste in it, 
you can go ahead to add one tablespoon of shrimp paste if you want but I'm making a vegetarian version so there is no shrimp paste in there yeah as you can see that it has already brown a little bit uh, a lot actually quite nicely brown golden brown so I'm just going to turn off the heat and I'm gonna let it cool before I put it into a processor a food processor to turn it into a paste this has cooled down a little bit I'm just going to add the water inside add some tamarind juice here we use concentrate in Germany but uh, if you can get those tamarind juice that are uh, that you squeeze out from the seed that is even better sugar now you can use brown sugar gula melaka or white sugar but i prefer to use white sugar for this um remember butchal also needs to be sweet it's a bit like satay sauce yeah except it is not so elaborate as satay sauce a bit of salt We'll give it a nice mix and let's take it to a boil now this thing is boiling already what we want to do is to now add the grounded peanuts you see the skin really really helps to make the purchase sauce uh, give it a depth of color yeah so put everything in and I'll slowly cook that until it thickens nicely and it's you can see that um, it has thickened you know in the kampong what they do is they always cook this until it completely thickens and then they cool it down and whenever they want to eat it they just add uh, boiled water or uh, to it so but here I'm going to eat it so I'm not gonna make it until it's so dry so to me this is uh, okay already in terms of the thickness of the gravy so now it's time to plate it. Normally, what they do is they serve it to you in a uh, banana uh, cone shape uh, cup, yeah? So I don't have that, so I'm just going to put it also in a cup like this, but um, it's not banana, so I'm just going to put in a little bit of all the different vegetables in it. We're gonna drizzle this. The sauce, yeah. There we go. This is our pacho. Pacho in a cup. Time to try my pacho in a cup. Unfortunately, it's not made out of banana leaf. Mmm. 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 You have to try it. It's so good. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to make a rendang that's vegan. And for that, I'm going to be using a new ingredient that's just called lion's mane mushroom. So this is the lion's mane mushroom. I bought dried in dried form and I've reconstituted it in water. There you go. We're going to cut them into smaller pieces. Now we're going to cook the rendang and we're going to use this in lieu of beef. And garlic. Lemon grass. I'm going to use some Malaysian meat curry powder in here. Okay, let's add the oil. I'm going to add it in small batches. Just throw in some of this mushroom.
mushroom seasoning, salt, bit of sugar, and coconut cream. So this is just about ready. Uh, it's up to you how saucy you want this. I'm just going to reduce it a little bit more. Okay, let's dish this up. <laughs> there you go. It's the vegan mushroom rendang that we're going to serve with our nasi lemak. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at replicating ayam goreng or fried chicken. Um, I'm going to experiment with two different types of substitutes for the chicken. Uh, one is nankamuda or young jackfruit and the other is mushrooms, okay, uh, including the lion's mane mushroom that I used in the rinda. Turn this on. Gonna add some of the onion, but primarily the juice, some curry powder, if you have galangal powder, you can add that too, garlic, lemongrass, Bit of turmeric, salt, sugar, and some optional mushroom seasoning, lion's head mushrooms. the mushroom and yum jackfruit Heat up the oil. This is the rice flour. Okay, so we're going to drench these in flour very well so it's to make sure that they crisp up There you go, that's your vegan ayam goreng. Okay, so let's have a go at making a vegan egg omelette to go with your nasi lemak. And we're going to use tofu, soft tofu. 
Okay, and we're gonna mash this up. And to that, we're going to add black salt, this is optional. You can put a bit of mushroom seasoning if you want. Bit of pepper. Bit of tapioca starch. And then we're gonna add the bisan flour. I use bisan flour, you can use chickpea flour if you want, they're very similar. You want some texture, you can add some thinly sliced onion to this too. heating this up. So let's cut up some cucumber, assemble everything together. That's the rice I'm sticking in a bowl and just pressing it down a little. Cucumber. The ikambulis. Sambal. The rundang. Fried peanuts. There you go. It's your vegan nasi lemak. Don't forget, if you want the recipe, they're all going to be in our next e-magazine, recipe e-magazine. You just need to sign up at malaysianchefs.com slash street food journeys. Okay? And I'll see you next time. distinct people groups in Malaysia. There are the Malays, which are the native people, very comparable to Indonesians, uh, same religion, same language. There are Indian people as well as Chinese people, which really is amazing for food. You've got Indonesian food, Malay food, uh, Indian food, and Chinese food. This is why Malaysia is like world famous for its food. Kind of three different nationalities competing for the food title, as well as they all kind of blend together and make new foods. Very excited to eat this. So what's the best food in Malaysia? Malay, Indian, or Chinese? Oh, it's quite uh, controversial a bit. What's your favorite? Like for me, I love Chinese food. What's your favorite? Indian. What's your favorite? Malay. There you have it. There you have it. So it's a mixture. It's a mixture. <laughs> right on.